Here we have example 6 with the first derivative test. Uh, so we're going to use the first derivative test to find all the local extrema of uh, h of x equals 2x to the fifth minus 5x to the fourth minus 10x cubed. So, um, you know, step 0, uh, find the domain of f of x, or in this case h of x, whatever we're calling the function, doesn't really matter. So find the domain. Um, it's just a polynomial, right? 2x to the fifth, 5x to the fourth, 10x cubed. And uh, for all polynomials, uh, the domain is just all real numbers. So, you know, we can take any number raised to the fifth, multiply by two, raised to the fourth, multiply by negative five, raised to the third, multiply by negative ten, uh, any number's okay. So the domain is all real numbers, so there's nothing really worth writing down for that. Um, so step one, uh, find all the critical points. So that means take the derivative, find where the derivative is zero and where it's undefined. So um, this example will be a little more straightforward because uh, it's just a polynomial. So it'll be a little more straightforward than the other ones we did. But anyway, uh, h prime of x equals uh, power rule is just going to be, uh, so this is going to be 5x to the fourth, and then we have this multiplying by 2 here, so it's going to be 10x to the fourth, and then here, uh, power rule again, 4x cubed, and then multiplying by this 5, so we're going to have 20x cubed, and then here, x cubed, the derivative is going to be 3x squared, and then multiplying by uh, negative 10, so minus uh, 30x squared. Okay, so that's our derivative. Now we just want to figure out, all right, where's the derivative of zero? Where is it undefined? Well, uh, it's never undefined, right? The derivative is just, uh, it's a polynomial again. So it's just another polynomial. So um, there are no values of x that make this undefined, so nothing like that's going to happen. So now we just want to figure out, all right, where's the zero? Well, notice here, um, 10, 20, 30. So each of these terms has a common factor of 10 we can pull out. So let's do that, 10. But also x to the fourth, x to the third, x to the second. Um, there's a common factor of x squared we can pull out. So let's do that. Now if we pull a 10x squared out of the first, what's left? Just x squared. If we pull a 10x squared out of the second, what's left? Uh, minus 2x. If we pull 10x squared out of this guy, what's left? Uh, minus 3. All right, so that's our derivative here um, in factored forms. So now we just want to take this and set it equal to 0. All right, figure out where's this guy zero. So either uh, this first term or this first uh, factor, or the first part is zero, or the second part is zero. So 10x squared equals zero, or x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals zero. So 10x squared is zero, that just means x equals zero. Here, uh, this can be factored into um, x minus 3 times x plus 1, right? So I guess, you know, we could have also done this up here, but uh, we didn't for no apparent reason, I guess, uh, equals zero. So x equals three or negative one. All right, so these are the only critical points, zero, three, and negative one. So that was step one, find all the critical points. Now step two, make a sign chart for f prime, for the derivative, or in this case, h prime. Um, so now we're gonna make a sign chart, and we're gonna put negative one, uh, three, and zero on there. So let's go ahead and do that. And remember, the domain is all real numbers here, so there's nothing to worry about. Let's maybe make this a little bit higher. So uh, always label the sign chart. So it's a sign chart for the derivative, so we're going to call it h primed. Uh, and then we're going to put uh, negative 1, 0, and 3 on there. So here's negative 1, here's 0, here's 3. And yeah, this is totally not to scale, but it's, uh, it doesn't really matter, I guess. Let's maybe make a little more room for... Uh, positive negative uh, labels later. So now that's step two, that was step two, make a sign chart. Now step three, determine the sign of the derivative in each interval. So we have four intervals here to check actually. So negative infinity to negative one, negative one to zero, zero to three, and three to infinity. So we do have quite a bit to check, uh, but we just want to pick one number from each interval. So um, from this first interval, let's pick negative two. All right, we're gonna pick negative two. So h primed of negative two um, actually, before we jump into that, let's come over here, and, um, so x squared minus 2x minus 3, remember, we could factor that, uh, as x minus 3 times x plus 1. So actually, our derivative, uh, we can write it like this. We can write, uh, h primed of x equals 10x squared, okay, 10x squared times, uh, x minus 3 times x plus 1, because this factors into that, uh, x minus 3x plus 1, so let's do that x minus 3 times x plus 1. All right, now the reason we want to do this is because um, 
here, you know, when we evaluate the derivative of these points up here, remember, we don't care what the actual value is, we just care whether it's positive or whether it's negative. So, um, and this form is going to be the easiest to work with for that. So 10x squared, x minus 3x plus 1. Now what's nice is that uh, 10x squared, that's always positive, unless x is 0, but 0 is a critical point, so we're not going to have that um, as one of our test points. So here, 10x squared, always positive, and then we just really have to check x minus 3x plus 1. So let's come up here. Um, so we're going to use this form to evaluate the uh, derivatives. So h prime to negative 2 is going to be 10 times negative 2 squared times the quantity negative 2 minus 3 times the quantity negative 2 plus 1. So this is uh, 10 times negative 2 squared times the quantity negative 2 minus 3 times the quantity negative 2 plus 1. So this, these aren't really bad numbers, but what are we going to have here? Um, this part's always going to be positive. It's 10 times something squared. So this is 10 times 4 uh, positive, totally positive. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So positive number times a negative number times another negative number. So positive, negative, negative. If you multiply all those, you get a positive number, right? So you know, 10 times 4 times 5 is what it's going to be. So it's going to be a 200, but we don't really care about that. Um, so much. You know, we, it doesn't matter what the value is, it just matters is it positive or is it negative. So h prime to negative 2 is positive, it's greater than 0, so the derivative is positive in this whole interval here. Alright, great. So now, um, between negative 1 and 0, there aren't really any good numbers to pick, but let's just pick uh, negative a half, I guess. So that's negative 1 half is between negative 1 and 0, probably one of the better numbers we can pick. So h prime of negative 1 half is going to be uh, 10 times negative one half squared times the quantity negative one half minus three times the quantity negative one half plus one. So um, this is 10 times negative one half squared. And remember this part is always positive. 10 times a positive number is always positive. And then uh, times negative one half minus three and then times uh, negative one half plus one. Okay, so this is uh, 10 times one fourth so negative one half minus three, you know, it's, it's negative seven halves, but if you don't want to worry about that, uh, then don't. So let's just write it like this. And then negative one half plus one is positive one half. So that's a little simpler to do. Uh, but anyway, you know, this, you know, just common denominator, six is three, or sorry, three is six over two. So negative one over two minus six over two, not too complicated. But the point I'm trying to make here is that uh, we don't care about the value. So we don't really have to go that far. We can just say, okay, positive number. Okay, this is the positive number times a negative number, right? Negative one half minus three is something uh, definitely negative, and then positive number. So positive times negative times positive is a negative number, all right? So two positives make a positive, then you multiply by a negative to get negative, right? So just like up here, we had a positive number times a negative number times a negative number, which gave us greater than zero. And then down here, positive, negative, positive is negative, all right? So uh, the derivative is negative in this whole interval here. Okay. So, um, you know, we can see that evaluating the derivative, if we work with this form here, um, it'd be kind of a mess to evaluate at negative one-half, and even negative two would be kind of tedious. Negative one-half would be kind of a mess here because of these exponents. But um, if we work with the factored form and just think about, okay, we only care about where is the derivative positive and where is it negative. We don't care about these actual values up here, right? We don't care what this actually equals or that. Um, we just want to know is it positive or is it negative. Just remember that and this step won't be so bad. Okay, so next, um, between 0 and 3, let's pick 1. 1's a good one to pick. h prime of 1 equals uh, 10 times 1 squared times the quantity 1 minus 3 times the quantity 1 plus 1. So this is 10 times 1 squared. 10 times 1 squared. Um, let's maybe make that a little bit neater. Sorry about that. 10 times uh, 1 squared, and then times the quantity 1 minus 3 times the quantity 1 plus 1. Okay, so this is positive, always positive. Um, this is negative, this is positive. So positive times negative times positive is negative. So actually we see that the derivative is negative in this interval as well. All right, how about that? So uh, next, um, one more interval to check. So from 3 to infinity, uh, let's just pick 4. So uh, h primed of 4. Um, well, let's use this factor form again. So 10 times 4 squared times the quantity 4 minus 3 times the quantity 4 plus 1. So this is 10 
times 4 squared times the quantity 4 minus 3 times the quantity 4 plus 1. Positive number, positive number, positive number. You multiply three positive numbers, you get another positive number. So the derivative is positive here. All right, and that was step three. Uh, determine the sign of the derivative in each interval. Now step four, apply the first derivative test to find the extrema. So step four, now we're going to um, apply the first derivative test and we see, okay, here, positive derivative, negative derivative. So the first derivative test tells us that we have a local max right here at x equals negative one. Um, negative derivative, negative derivative. Uh, the first derivative test tells us there's actually nothing here. It's a critical point, zero is still a critical point but uh, there's no local max, there's no local min. Um, and then here, negative derivative, positive derivative means uh, the first derivative test tells us there's a local min here. So local max at negative one, local min at three, but nothing at zero. It's, so it is a critical point, um, but it's not a local min or a local max. So remember, positive derivative means increasing function, negative derivative means decreasing function. So function increases and then starts decreasing at negative one then continues to decrease, uh, then the derivative is zero when x is zero, and then it decreases some more after that, so that's why there's no min or max here. And then the function starts increasing again at three, at x equals three. So local max here, local min here, nothing here. All right, so um, now we wanna figure out what are the actual values. Now we know where we have a local max and where we have a local min, we just need to figure out what uh, are the actual values now. So remember to find those, we take negative one and three and we put them into the original function because we're talking about local mins and maxes of this function h of x here. So we want to know what are the actual values. So we take the locations of the max and min, negative one and three, and we put those locations into here to get the actual values. So let's do that. Um, let's make some room here. Uh, that was zero, but it's irrelevant. So um, we want to figure out, all right, what is h of negative 1? So that's going to be uh, 2 times negative 1 to the fifth minus 5 times negative 1 to the fourth minus 10 times negative 1 cubed. All right, so uh, negative 1 to the fifth is negative 1. So this is 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. Negative 1 to the 4th is positive 1, so this is just minus 5. Um, negative 1 cubed is negative 1. So this is minus 10 times negative 1, which is plus 10. So negative 2 minus 5 is minus 7. Okay, and then minus 7 plus 10 is 3. So this is 3. So uh, this is the local max value, and this is where it happens. So this is uh, where it's at, and this is what it is. So the local max at negative one is three. But anyway, before we talk about that, um, we're going to figure out, all right, now we take three, this three from here, because uh, this is where, this is where the local min is right here, right? This is where our local min is. Now we're gonna take this three and put it into H, and then see what's, uh, what the minimum value actually is. So h of three is gonna be two times three to the fifth, two times three to the fifth, two times three to the fifth, minus five times three to the fourth, and then uh, minus 10 times three cubed. All right, minus 10 times three cubed. So uh, kind of a big old number here, but three to the fifth is uh, 243. So we have two times 243. Uh, three to the fourth is 81, so minus five times 81. And um, mess here, minus five times 81, uh, not much better. And then uh, three cubed is 27, so minus 10 times 27. So, you know, um, work it out by hand or toss it into your calculator, and it, it's just simple arithmetic. So what you're gonna end up with is uh, negative 189. negative 189. So this is what the minimum value is, and this is where it happens at. So now let's go ahead and write uh, that down, and then that'll pretty much be it for this example. So um, let's see, local max uh, 
at x equals negative 1. Okay, this, it happened at x equals negative 1, and we just found out here that it is 3. Local max at x equals negative 1 is y equals 3. All right. Um, local min at... Okay, local min happened at x equals 3. Okay, local min happened here at x equals 3. And here we just found out that it equals negative 189. So this is what the minimum value actually is, negative 189. So it is y equals negative 189. All right, um, and again, this x equals 0 is nothing. It's not a min, it's not a max. It's still a critical point, but it's not a min or a max. So um, that's it for example 6, and this is our answer here. And that's example 6 with the first derivative test.